So I think that we figured out a composting hack. Not sure that it's good, not sure that it's bad, but it's something we're doing and I think it might be something you guys want to try. Hi chickens, chickens, oh, Bailey. How's everyone doing? So right here you see we have a whole bunch of food that we need to put into our compost bin. Some was going bad, some's just a lot of scraps from skin, shells from our eggs and everything like that. And now it's time to show you what we're going to do with these things. And this is the hack that you may have to start trying with your compost. You really need about three things. You're going to need things to compost, you're going to need a compost bin, and the last thing you're going to need is some chickens. And as you can see the chickens already know the drill, but this is what you're going to do. And there you have it. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys to do basically. The things that you would normally compost, plus some food scraps, any of that stuff that you build up, save a lot of it, build it up, throw it in your compost bin, and the main key is to have that compost bin, or at least one of your compost bins, inside the chicken run. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna pick out the things that they want to eat. They're not gonna eat the things that they don't like or shouldn't eat. And when they're in the process of that, they're scratching around, finding the things that they want to eat. So what they're doing is they're kind of flipping, scratching, and turning your compost bin for you so you don't have to do any of the work. So I've seen this method now a few times online, a few spots that people have been trying it out. And I feel like with compost, it's either there's no rules or there's so many rules when I've looked into seeing what I want to do for it and how we want to make compost for us here on our homestead. One of our main top things that we can compost right now and have it sit over time is our chicken manure. So every time we clean out our coop, it's perfect that it's in the chicken run here. As you can see, here's the coop. And there's our compost bin. It makes it really easy for us to clean out this coop right here, bring it over to our compost bin over there, and the chicken manure that's in there plus the straw and that's gonna mix with any of the food that they're not finishing or scratching around in there between anything else that we find as we put leaves and different kind of weeds in there and we're building up our compost and I'm telling you guys right now as soon as they're done kind of scratching around in there a lot I'm gonna show you guys exactly how that product's been looking for us but this is something that I've seen in a few spots and at the moment it looks like it's working for us so I wanted to kind of share it with you guys and I hope this is something that if you can consider it I think this is an idea that you should try to start and try to test yourself there's right here here's the big now her name is little chick this was her hen but we did think it was a rooster for a long time but it turned out to be a hen all right you can go how about that guy does anyone think this guy's a rooster right here? Stands up a little taller. Let's see. Hi, Sonny. Hi, Sonny. Hi. Hi, Milo. You good boy? We got something for you. It just came in. Should we go get some? So, unfortunately, Milo has been, kind of been limping around a little bit lately. As you can kind of see right there. The problem with having bigger dogs that grow so fast is sometimes their joints and muscles and bones and everything aren't growing all at the same time and growing at the same speeds. So that can cause kind of issues with their joints and not allowing them all to kind of be cohesive all at the same time. And right now, Milo's been limping around a lot. He's had this happen before and when we took him in, the doctor kind of explained us the same exact kind of phenomenon this happens with the bigger dogs. Problem is for most dogs, a size of this kind of container would last them three months because they only need one chew, but dogs over 75 pounds need three of them per day, so Milo gets this for about one month, and hopefully that'll be enough time to kind of fix his joints up and try to help him out here. Finally, our new flock that we just kind of brought in with our new existing flock of our five new chickens. They've been starting to lay some eggs, and here's how we can tell. Let me show you. If you can see this guy right here, they call these a pulla egg, and it's just a really small egg. It's just when chickens start first laying eggs, sometimes they can lay eggs that are a little bit smaller. We weren't used to our chickens really doing this for such a long period of time. Maybe because we never had other eggs to compare them to. 
But this flock, I've been finding a lot of small eggs, about one or two of them each day, which has been nice because that means these are going to be good consistent layers, hopefully. But we're happy. More eggs here on the homestead. You want to hold the little egg now? All right, this probably isn't the best idea, but when we do have cracked eggs, we try to give them to our dogs most of the time. We don't want to give them too many eggs, so I guess this one goes to the chickens. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so back to this compost bin in here. As you can see, this was a full cucumber just about one hour ago and they've hollowed out the inside of it. And now the skin of the cucumber will come into, go into composting. Another thing, we had a mango that was going bad and they've basically eaten that whole entire thing except for the core of it. So that'll go into our composting. And if I really show you guys here, let me show you. And you can kind of see that spot right there. You can see how moist and actually wet that soil is. And what that is is becoming really good compost for us. And if I was to show you guys the dirt outside of the run, it's dried up, it's sandy. But inside here, it is really starting to get moist. We have that top layer, but anything underneath it still retains a good moisture. And that's how you know that you're having a good compost showing up. It'd be a lot easier to use if we weren't using this pink shovel. But... Right now I don't have anything else to show you guys with. I can't find our scraper in here to kind of really get into there, but that spot kind of shows you by looking at the color of it. You can see the darkness and see the moisture that it's retaining. We're happy about it. You'll bring the eggs inside? All right. Show mommy we have another little egg. Show mama the little egg. Kind of look down a little bit. Theo, are you getting your first haircut? Yeah. I love that. Hi chickens, how's everyone doing? How we doing guys? Lola is the cat that you guys don't really ever get to see. She's our indoor cat and she is our pest control inside the house. She has been catching a lot of the flies and the bugs that come inside the house lately, which has been nice. We actually uh, ended up having uh, one single mouse show up in the house the other day and Lola is the one that discovered it, but Bailey, our wheat and terrier, is the one that finished it off. So she also helps out for any kind of rodent control that possibly shows up in the house. And then you guys saw the meat birds. Those are our Cornish cross, the little baby chicks in there right now. Um, we are on our first journey here on raising our own meat. We are excited for it, but it is something that is new to us. It's been something different. So they're only about one week old and they're really not any different than the other chickens that we've had up to that point. They're only being one week old. But we are hoping here in about one week, it's hot outside right now, it's been hitting 90 degrees almost every single day. So it'll be nice to try to get them outside here on our grass and start pulling them along in a chicken tractor as soon as possible because the sooner we can get them out here, they don't have to be inside our house. And if you don't really notice, they're inside our bathroom because it's the best spot for them to be, which is unfortunate for us, especially on the hot days where it can get kind of stinky in there. So. Not the best spot, but it's something that you got to make do with what you got. So that's the spot that we have. We have anything good here in the garden? No. Nope. Anything to harvest? A few things. Cucumbers and lemon ball. Delilah, what do you see over there? I see some beans. Some beans? A bean. You found a bean? She picked up two, two, lots three. of beans. Here was a piece for you, a piece for you. Hi, Theo. <laughs> you eat your popsicle, your face is a mess. <laughs> Your face is a mess. It looks like the chickens are still hanging out in the compost bin. What are you guys doing? Still scratching around, making it work, huh? So chickens in your compost bin, is it gonna work? It looks like it at the moment, and it's something that I definitely wanted to get out there. I've seen people doing it. I've seen people have different ways of making it work. This is the way we're using our chickens in composting to kind of co-mingle the two to make it work. And at the moment, like I said, I think it's working great. I don't see any problems with it. Is it something that's going to end up being one of those decisions that we wish we didn't do? Maybe. But I think that's the big part when you start homesteading and you have to try to take chances. You have to try something and take the chance that it's not going to work and that you're just going to fall flat on your face. Because those every single time that you fall flat on your face, you get to get back up and realize that didn't work and you get to try something new that might work better.